Today, we continue to explore the dark and mysterious history of the Lady of the Green Kirtle. As we saw in the first part of the series, linked to in the comments below, the Emerald Witch was one of the most formidable and cunning enemies ever encountered in the history of Narnia. However, for all we've discovered about the Emerald Lady, from her magical powers, her strategies for conquest, and even the true nature of her most deadly abilities, the great question still remains. Who exactly was this great green northern witch and where did she come from? Many theories abound and many of you have left some fantastic ideas of your own in the comments section. We'll talk about some of those ideas and then we'll examine some of the most popular and intriguing theories. As we venture past the boundaries of the known and step into the realm of theory and speculation, it's going to be a wild ride, so let's get started. It's time to leave the Shadowlands behind and step into a world that's more real than our own. It's time to follow me into the wardrobe. At the onset of our journey today, it'd be wise to go ahead and make some things clear. Today, we're venturing past what is known or the pure lore of Narnia, and instead, we're running headlong into what is possible as we delve into speculation and theory. And where the Green Lady is concerned, some theories are definitely more plausible than others. So, with that being said, let's start by taking a look at one of the most popular theories about the origins of the Emerald Queen. Specifically, that the Green Witch is really Jadis, who never actually died. It's almost impossible to read about the Lady of the Green Kirtle and not see some hint of Jadis in her character. Both are mysterious women that come and go as they please, both are very tall and extraordinarily beautiful. Both are powerful witches with a terrible and unpredictable bloodlust. Both have the ability to shapeshift. Both come to Narnia from the wildlands of the north. Both are very ancient and possess the power of eternal youth. And both have an unquenchable thirst for power that would lead to an obsession to overthrow and conquer Narnia. There have also been other reasons why many fans see a link between the two witches. In the BBC production of Narnia, both Jadis and the Lady of the Green Kirtle were played by the same actress, Barbara Kellerman. Also, some later editions of the book include character sketches, one of which mentions Jadis as being a character in the silver chair. However, it's generally agreed that this was an editing mistake and not at all part of the canon. Now, as you probably know, the White Witch met her untimely demise at the first Battle of Baruna in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. We read about her dramatic last moments here. Then, with a roar that shook all Narnia from the western lamppost to the shores of the eastern sea, the great beast flung himself upon the White Witch. Lucy saw her face lifted toward him for one second with an expression of terror and amazement. Then Lion and Witch had rolled over together, but with the Witch underneath. And when those who were still living saw that the Witch was dead, they either gave themselves up or took to flight. So, if the witch was dead, how exactly could she reappear 1500 years later as the Green Lady? Some people will claim that Jadis wasn't actually killed. Instead, she was only believed to be dead. However, there are some problems with this theory. First of all, we must remember that it was Aslan himself that killed Jadis in the first Battle of Baruna. It seems almost impossible to accept that anyone could survive an attack from the great Aslan. More importantly, it's hard to believe that the powerful and seemingly all-knowing Aslan would have been mistaken about the fact that he had killed Jadis. The most important thing to remember, however, is that the book itself clearly states that Jadis was dead. So there can be no mistake, Jadis did not survive. With that in mind, I rule this theory not possible. Now, there are some who accept that Jadis died, but they present a similar theory from a different angle, which is the second theory we'll look at, that the Green Witch is Jadis resurrected. The basis for this idea comes from a dark and infamous scene in Prince Caspian. In this scene, we encounter a meeting between Caspian himself and a hag, a werewolf, and a dwarf named Nicobrick. The evil trio actually attempt to convince Caspian to join them in a dark ceremony which will resurrect Jadis. When Dr. Cornelius protests, pointing out that all of the other stories agree that the witch is dead, the hag disagrees. She makes the astounding claim that witches never really die. The problem is the group is never able to actually convince the ceremony, so we don't know if the hag's claims are actually true. Some have speculated that if Aslan was able to resurrect, and Jadis is his evil counterpart, she should be able to resurrect too. The problem is, Aslan's resurrection was the result of the laws of deep magic. 
As an innocent victim whose blood was shed for a traitor, he was resurrected in an ultimate act of justice. The White Witch is far from an innocent victim, so the deep magic doesn't apply to her. I rule this theory not plausible. The third theory we'll look at is one of the most creative and fascinating ideas I've come across, and I've linked to its origin in the video notes. This theory states that the Green Witch is a deranged naiad. What is a naiad, you ask? Simply put, it's a water fairy. Just like the dryads are spirits that live in and preside over the trees, naiads live in and preside over sources of water. With that in mind, the evidence is presented in these four points. Number one, the serpent appeared at a fountain that flowed freshly out of the earth. She then reappears at the exact same fountain when she approaches Prince Rillian in the form of a woman. Rillian and the Lady of the Green Kirtle could have easily disappeared by the fountain itself since it led underground. That's why there was seemingly immortal as well, as nymphs only die when their tree or watery domain is destroyed. Number three, the Green Lady's death causes the underlands to flood. It would indicate that her magical powers have some influence on the bodies of water underground. Number four, she plays a stringed instrument, something rather like a mandolin. In The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, when the Pevensies are arriving at Aslan's camp, Lewis writes, there were tree women there and well women, dryads and naiads as they used to be called in our world, who had stringed instruments. It was from they who made the music. As I said, this is a brilliant theory and certainly fascinating to consider. However, I can't ignore the fact that she simply doesn't seem like a naiad to all the creatures in Narnia. They would have known naiads, perhaps personally, and would have understood their unique magical abilities and skills, as well as their physical traits. Also, naiads don't really possess the same magical abilities demonstrated by the Lady of the Green Kirtle. Their magic is mostly limited to their effect on water. Really, to the Narnians and to us readers, the Green Lady undoubtedly fit the undeniable characteristics of a witch. So while I love this theory, I have to deem it cool but inconsistent. Number four, this theory is another fascinating one, that the Green Witch is actually Lilith, the mother of Jadis and the first wife of Adam. This one's extremely interesting and there are some very compelling parallels between Lilith and the Lady of the Green Kirtle. Lilith is said to have an intense hatred of women and children and roams about seeking opportunities to kill both. For men, she appears as a beautiful and nearly irresistible temptress. Could it just be coincidence that the Green Lady murdered the Queen and tried to have the children murdered as well, but spared the life of Rillian? instead choosing to overpower his mind with her irresistible beauty. Even more compelling, some traditions hold that Lilith was able to shapeshift just like the Green Lady, and not just transforming into any form. In those traditions, Lilith was actually the serpent who tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden. I declare this theory very intriguing. However, it could be the case that these qualities aren't only exclusive to Lilith, perhaps other creatures also possess these abilities, especially if they're genetic. Which leads me to my last theory, and the one that I hold to, that the Green Witch was actually the daughter of Jadis. When the Elder Dwarf surmises that the Green Lady and the White Witch were of the same kind, what exactly does that mean? I believe it's more than just the fact that they're both witches. To understand the use of the word kind, one might harken back to the biblical story of Noah's Ark, where Noah is commanded to gather animals, two of every kind. Kind meaning species. One popular presumption is that the green witch is actually Jadis' sister. However, it's made very clear in The Magician's Nephew that every living being in Charn outside of the speaker was destroyed when Jadis uttered the deplorable word. So it's not possible that the Emerald Lady is Jadis's sister. But Jadis was the last of her species, wasn't she? After all, she destroyed every creature in her home universe when she uttered the deplorable word. How could she have reproduced? Interestingly enough, it is rumored that Jadis had gen ancestry as well as the blood of giants. Where did Jadis spend nearly 1,000 years biding her time before returning to conquer Narnia? 
in the north, in giant country. Where did the Green Witch also come from? The north, in giant country. It's possible that the Lady of the Green Kirtle had Jadis for a mother and a giant for a father, which would explain why the Lady of the Green Kirtle was so friendly with the giants of Harafang and knew so much about the ancient giant city. These were her people. Now, I have to say there's one other way Jadis could have a daughter in Narnia, and I have to give credit to my subscriber, Hive Mistress, who left her theory in the comments. When I read her theory, my mind was blown. What if Jadis didn't conceive the Green Witch in Narnia? What if instead, when Jadis was first brought into Narnia, she was already pregnant? We can assume that while in Charn, the deplorable word destroyed all biological life outside of the speaker. However, it didn't actually destroy all biological life inside the speaker. There must have been essential organisms inside of Jadis' body that had to survive the deplorable word in order for Jadis to survive. The scientific word for these organisms are called microbiota. If Jadis was already pregnant in Charn, the baby would have also been protected from the deplorable word by residing in Jadis' body. It would also explain why, in The Magician's Nephew, Jadis set herself frozen in time in the Hall of Images, which portrayed the long, ancient chain of succession of the Charn royal family. Did Jadis know that she was more than just a final link in this chain? Is there a final clue shown in Pauline Bain's canon illustration of the Hall of Kings, which clearly shows not one, but two empty thrones. Well, that's my theory anyway. And this one, I deem pretty awesome. Of course, when it comes to Narnian lore, one of the things we have to accept is that we're not always guaranteed all the answers. For some stories, in fact, we seem to be left with more questions than answers to tell the truth. But that's actually a good thing because the greatest stories always leave the door open to the wonder and beauty of the mystery. It's the mystery that transforms the dry seed of details into a living tree of possibilities. It's the mystery that keeps the story alive long after it's come to an end. And it's the mystery that reminds us that beyond our own thimble of knowledge, there's an ocean of truth that's out there beckoning us to dive in and explore. So I'll take the unknown any day especially when it comes to the mystery of the Lady of the Green Kirtle. Well, that's all the time we have for today, but I'd love to hear your thoughts about this series, so leave a comment below and let me know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on the next episode. I look forward to joining you next time as we take another journey into the wardrobe.